join me tonight when I try and photograph the target that got me into this hobby, the amazing Andromeda Galaxy. Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Thank you very much for joining me. Tonight I have the one-shot colour camera back on the telescope and that's because I've had an issue with my uh, ASI 2600 mono. I've had the dreaded silicon leak on the uh, sensor, so I'm currently deciding whether or not to clean it myself, which I think I'm going to do, or uh, send it back to uh, ZWO and see if they can replace it. But um, at the moment, the mono camera is out of action, so I'm going after a broadband target tonight, and what better target to to photograph than the Andromeda Galaxy. And I absolutely love this target. So this is the reason why I got into the hobby. Just before the first lockdown, um, end of February, early March 2020, I ordered my first Star Tracker. And the first night I got up and running, I shot the Andromeda Galaxy. And when I saw that picture pop up on the back of the screen, on the back of my Sony a7 III, I was absolutely blown away. So I photographed that with the Sony, the 100 to 400 millimeter lens, and I captured about 16 or 18 two minute exposures um, and pulled together an image. It's not the best image in the world, but I was absolutely amazed by it and I was so proud of it at the time. And that really started my journey in this hobby. I, um, I, I was basically hooked from then and I, I photographed as many targets as I could. Um, and then I eventually upgraded to a bigger mount, bigger telescope, um, a, a, a dedicated astro, uh, camera and kind of went from there so this this target means a lot to me but I haven't actually got a, got a photo of this target that I'm proud of yet so the first few images obviously I was proud of at the time but there were lots of flaws with them um, but now um, I look back at my Andromeda target uh, photos and yeah there's just quite a few issues that I, that I have with them the the re most recent image that I captured um, I think the exposure lengths were too long um, and as such I've got quite a lot of star bloating in the image. Now I tried to reduce that as much as I could in post-processing but I don't think it looks great. So my plan tonight is to use the one-shot colour camera to take two maybe three minute exposures um, and just get as much data as I can. I'm also going to take some shorter exposures for the core so I don't blow that out and create a uh, HDR style image um, tonight. So yeah, hopefully it all goes to plan and I've got something to show you at the end of the night. Okay, so this is always my favorite part of the night, seeing that first exposure pop up on screen and it should any moment now appear. So this is the first two minute exposure And there it is. And apart from that horrendous uh, satellite going through the image, I think it is looking pretty good. So that's one of 200 odd that I'm gonna try and capture tonight. The, uh, the gain is set to 100, as you can see down here. The cooling to, to minus 20. And uh, should just be good to go and let that run all through the night. So hopefully I can get some good good data and finally get an image of Andromeda that I'm happy with. So I've had a bit of a nightmare trying to edit this image and the main reason is because I've got so many files that I want to try and combine and integrate um, so I can actually edit the final image. Now I ended up with 177 two minute exposures on the Andromeda Galaxy. I also had flat frames, bias frames, dark frames and dark flats that I wanted to try and integrate. And my computer just kept on running out of memory. Um, so I had about 132 gigabytes left on my hard drive. And every time I tried to use the weighted batch pre-processing tool, it said that I did not have enough memory to complete the task. Uh, I tried to clear as much as I could, but um, I ended up having to go through it um, and do all of the procedures manually in Pick Insight, which I managed to do, um, but it did take quite a long time. It took 
about four or five hours in total to, to get this uh, the, the final integrated image. Um, so I was a little bit frustrated with that. So I thought I would also try out Astro Pixel Processor to see if that was any easier. Um, and I loaded all my images in. Um, again, I followed a few online tutorials, um, but left most of the settings to automatic and hit integrate. And about an hour and a half later, it spat out an image um, and it didn't run out of memory, didn't run out of space. Um, so I was really, really impressed with that. Um, so I just thought I'd quickly jump into um, the computer and show you the difference between the, the stack of the Pick Insight and also the stack from Astro Pixel Processor and then the final two edited, edited images. Please let me know which you uh, prefer. Okay, so I just thought I'd really quickly show you the difference between the Pick Insight stack and the APP stack. So this is what the Pick Insight stack looked like after integrating all of the, the images and stacking them. Um, and as you can see, very bright green, but after removing the background and doing a color calibration, so this is with a dynamic background extraction and a color calibration, this is what the Pick Insight stack looked like. So no other edits on this apart from the color calibration and background extraction. And this is what it looked like from the APP. So again, dynamic background extraction, color calibration on the image. And to my eye, I much prefer the APP stack. Now, I don't know whether you agree with me, but I just think it looks a lot more natural. Um, it looks a lot less contrasty. Um, and I think the colors look a little bit nicer um, in the APP. Um, stacked image. Um, so I think I might try and use APP a bit more um, moving forward um, and see see if that impacts any of my images. Um, so I did edit both. Um, so I went through the same procedure how I would edit the image um, with, with both. And again, I think I prefer the APP image uh, or the final result. And I'll show you both of those now. So this is what the APP image looked like and I was really pleased with the colors that I was able to pull out of the the galaxy um, and the detail that I was able to get in the the core of the galaxy as well um, so if I zoom out a little bit and show you that um, you can see quite a lot of uh, detail in the dust lanes um, and the, the core of the galaxy the galaxy wasn't too overblown either which was quite pleasing um, so that's the APP image after editing it and then this is the pick insight image um, as you can see the colors are a little bit different um, I'm not great with colors anyway but to my eye this is a little bit more blue whereas this one's a little bit blue purpley red which I, I much prefer so I don't know whether you agree um, but I much prefer this um, this edit um, and I, I tried to to match it the same I tried to um, re-edit this to, to, to pull out some of those reds but I wasn't able to so this was the best I could do with the pick, pick insight and um, I think there's a little bit more color noise in the background the core looks a little bit more overblown to me as well um, and then this is the APP edit and I much prefer this one um, so this is the one that I then exported into Lightroom did a few more little tweaks to so I'll show you that final image now um, but let me know which you prefer do you prefer the pick insight do you prefer the APP edit um, am I completely wrong have I got that wrong but um, let me know um, but yeah thanks thank you very much for watching I'll show you the final image now um, and I will see you in the next video